cash, homie. Adrian Peterson has a loose! Oh my heavens! Sideline! Touchdown! Why do you even ponder passing? Let's go to work, huh? Let's go to work! How do you like that? Five shot three, one, two, three, five! Right. Welcome in, everybody. Welcome in to Bleeding Purple, a podcast about the Minnesota Vikings. My name is Tyler Haig, and I am joined, as always, by Mr. Adam Patrick. How's it going, buddy? That's good. Uh, I'm not just uh, excited about the big news today with the Vikings. If you haven't heard, <laughs> what big news is that? Oh, they they re-signed Amir Abdullah. That's, oh, that, uh, yes, that's huge news. I'm so glad huge, you. I'm so glad you signing. brought that up. I put I yeah. put it on the list. We didn't discuss oh, yeah. it previously, but yeah, Super Bowl. Super Bowl. You know, and I also saw a report from Chris Thomason that says he's ready to be more than just a uh, kick returner or punt returner or whatever the bleep he was doing Uh, where I stopped (laughs) remembering that he was even on the team. But at this point, honestly, he is the number two running back, basically, on Uh, this football team. Maybe Mike Boone. Oh, yeah, you're right, Boone. I forget that Boone. Rock Thomas, question mark. Yeah, his 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 you know his time with the Vikings is a little up in smoke. So you know. Ooh, well, well done, sir. <laughs> well done, well done. Um, actually, like realistically, since we talked last, lots of news has happened. The most oh. I don't want to say important, but uh, the biggest news is last week we were talking about how Anthony Barr was going to be a New York Jet, and oh my gosh, what are they going to do? Do they now draft at 18? Not a problem anymore, Adam, because Anthony so Barr bad. is coming back. He changed his mind. He said he was yeah. about to throw up, and that was... Worst an, day of... Worst, yeah. Yeah, worst up, day of worst his life. Worst day of his life. <laughs> I, Tells you a lot about the Jets. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> we can. I wanted to go down that road for a little bit because this is not the first time that this has happened with the Jets and the Vikings and players. And that's how you get more money. You pretend like you're going to the Jets, and then the Vikings are like, "Wait, wait, 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 wait." <laughs> well, <laughs> Hang on. We'll Send a Jet money. over there now that you've seen it. Are you cool? Do you want to come back here? And Anthony Barr's like, "Yes," and I'm sorry. And not that yeah. obviously that's not how it happened. But yeah, Anthony Barr is going to be coming back. What do you think? Well, first of all. How, what do you think about the move in general? Like, yay, Anthony Barr's back. That was my initial reaction was like, oh, cool, one of us. Like, yeah, bro, come on. We love you still, yeah. and, like, we're a happy family. Later on, I thought different things about it. What was your initial <laughs> reaction to it? Oh, I think everyone was preparing themselves, mostly, like, the entire season of, of him leaving. So we weren't looking at him maybe in the most positive light as we could have because we're all just like, ah, oh, he – He's leaving anyways. Who cares? This is um, natural human reaction, by the way, oh, yeah. to when you're going to lose a player to be like, but here are all the things that we yeah. didn't like oh, yeah. that he was doing, and so feel better about it. These are normal yeah. things. I saw there was a lot of clapback on Twitter after the flip where people were calling other people out for saying oh, yeah. <laughs> like not so nice things about Anthony Barr. We were just we yeah. were just uh, I never, grieving. We were just getting yeah. through it, man. And I, I don't think I was ever one to say, like, he's a – bad player i just don't read into like people are like oh you made four straight pro bowls and i'm like mitz trubisky made a pro bowl last year so that's not a and then like you know him playing a lot different than he did in his first two years and i mean that's pretty obvious i just didn't think that he was maybe worth the amount of money that he was going to be able to get from the vikings or or elsewhere but based on the market this year uh you know what like the backup linebacker for the Vikings probably could have got a very good deal yeah. out there. Um, but yeah, I'm actually more impressed with Anthony Barr after his decision because I thought he was more of a guy who might have been more about the money than rather than you know thinking as a like about the team as a whole. Mm-hmm. And he said he likes you know the Vikings and everything they've done and what they they have moving forward. I mean he's still getting paid a lot of money, so it's not. You know, forget about that. It's not like he took a huge pay cut or whatever from not going to the Jets. He's still but getting he like, definitely took a he took less money, noticeable yeah. amount of less money than he could have, which is like admirable yeah. if you're looking team first. I get that. Yeah. I, I totally agree with you. Um, yeah, I mean, I, I completely agree. And the way his camp was talking this whole time was like, he's an edge rusher. He needs to get paid like an edge rusher. And then it was like. All of a sudden, yeah, they were okay with him not being that. And then in his press conference, Anthony Barr was very like, yeah, man, whatever role 
they give me is cool. I've been successful in this role. It's like, but wait, you didn't just. A well, second yeah, ago, and that I, was not the thing that you were I saying. I think he know he knows how good of like a coach, a defensive coach, Mike Zimmer is, and how hard it probably is to play in a defense that the Vikings have right now with with all the talent that they have on defense. Like he, he could have gone to the Jets, and who knows, like how good or bad that defense would have been. They added some people, but, you know, Greg Williams is in charge of that defense. That's a whole another story, probably uh, another reason why Barr was like, yeah, I don't think so. Um, but, yeah. The, I can tell you, the, the money, me the, one meeting with him to be like, nah, I'm good. <laughs> no, I don't you. even – I honestly, if you ask me, I don't even know how he still has a job in the NFL. He shouldn't be in the NFL. But, you know, whatever. He was, like, uh, in charge of the Browns last I year. I know. Like, it's shocking <laughs> how he's been able you, to but, keep doing but this. But when, when your head coach is Hugh Jackson, you know, anyone looks like, you know, Fair a, point. A, pot, a pot of gold after after that. So. Fair point. Fair point. Um, I just <laughs> – yeah, I just I, I think I respect Anthony Barr more now than I did before. I just I thought he was more of a me me first kind of guy, and that doesn't seem to be the the case. And that's that's on me for thinking that way, obviously. But I but now it's I don't think I was able to think that way because he's not a very public person. Yeah, and even when he is interviewed, it's his answers are very pretty pretty short and just you know the you know the usual cliches, but. Yeah. Well, he, he, I feel like he opened up a lot in the, in the press conference and like revealed a lot, you know, about his way of thinking about coming back to the Vikings and stuff that people probably didn't think was going through his head. A hundred percent. And I think that this is also a great. It's important for us to notice this because the information that we are getting fed is designed. There's a reason you're getting that information. It's helping or hurting, or it's you know. There's a reason that this stuff is being leaked out. And so it is important for us as fans to recognize that these guys aren't always as we perceive them uh, to be, you know, whether that's good or bad or whatever, it's not always the case. And I think you're right. I think that Anthony Barr was kind of, I don't want to say a victim, but they were trying to get him edge rusher money and it made him look like kind of a jerk to some of the fans, you know, and that isn't necessarily how he actually thinks or how he feels, but it was going to get him more money. And so that was the play. Yeah. I do think moving forward though, they have to figure out some different ways to use him now that they know he's going to be there for a while, you know, and Everson Griffin's probably in the back of his career, you know, try and figure out more ways for Barr mm-hmm. to rush the passer and not make it so obvious, like, you know, create some different packages, maybe line him up on the defensive line every, you know, few snaps or whatever. Just, just mm-hmm. he's, he's got those skills and well, everyone, everyone knows it. So might as well utilize him. But I know he has another role in defense, and Mike Zimmer's basically made him like. And he's he's got the green dot on his helmet, so he's he's the guy that relays all the play calls and everything to everyone. Mm-hmm. So he has a big role. Yeah. So. No, it. Uh, I don't know. We talked about it last week, but it kind of bugs me that everybody we're all just assuming that him as an edge rusher is going to be crazy successful, and we don't necessarily oh, no, yeah. know that. You know, like I mean, it's. It's one thing to have a guy lined up as a D end, and then it's a completely different thing to look at an Anthony Barr and never really know for sure if he's coming or not. I think that helps as far as his oh, pass yeah. rushing is concerned. But yeah, I think you're right. I think utilizing him in different ways is going to help the defense long term. And he is, as you said, a skilled enough player and a versatile enough dude where yeah. you can do that with him. And that I'm sure Zimmer has been looking into for a long time and perhaps was the reason that he came back in the first place because second question second part of this was do you think that this was Zimmer basically being like come on go get him and bring him back or do you think it was Barbie well, and like just kidding like I'm actually I want to come back and I'm sorry well did uh did Sheldon Richardson sign before well or did this happen around a similar amount of time where Sheldon Richardson left too because they both left, and Zimmer was probably like, "Come on, we can't lose like one of both these of these guys, guys. Has to come back." Yes, we yeah. need one of them back. I don't know. I, I, and, God, I was going to write down the timeline of things because and of Barr, questions like yeah, this. and Barr has been with the Vikings longer than Richardson, so you know if they were going to pick one or the other, I'm not surprised they went with Barr, yeah. especially be, him being you know Mike Zimmer's first draft pick or whatever. Um, but no, I think those those two have a good relationship, no matter how hard. 
Zimmer has been on Barr in the past. Barr said in his press conference, like, he'd go to war for Zimmer, and I, he's not the first person on the Vikings to say that. Um, they they respect him a lot, and they, you know, he does good work, so there's a reason why these guys keep coming back and maybe taking less money than they probably could have gotten elsewhere. For sure. And this, they all but, talk but fire about... Him. Yeah, but fire him. They all talk about uh, culture, what a great group they have. Yep. Uh, example of that would be guys leaving and then coming back because they miss mm-hmm. it. One of those that happened recently, uh, Shamar, Stefan Steven, came back. Steph. What do you make of this move? And also, bigger picture, do you think this money would be better spent on offensive linemen, or do you think that – Taking the defense back, I mean that we can talk at length about that in a second. But let's talk a little bit about. Well, first I want to ask you, uh, why did the Vikings make it seem like Shamar Stefan was like a huge signing? Like they had like all the video package stuff with mm-hmm. him and interview and press you know, conference. I've and been I'm like very perplexed. Um, is he even going to start? <laughs> I've been very perplexed with their choice of like video montage, like yeah. who they're giving it to, who they're not giving it to. Very strange like to far, me. Okay, sure. But this, but. yeah, this one was, we were led to believe that this was a huge signing. <laughs> <laughs> and and I don't I know don't, if it's. I don't remember him being amazing when he was with the Vikings. No. But. He did no. start a bunch of games for the Seahawks, but I don't remember him being amazing for them either. But you know, I don't. I, I don't maybe either. it's the whole re, maybe it's the whole rejoining the Vikings thing. But I think it was. Also, I think it was like a one of us thing. Like, remember he was here and now he's back. Family. See. So, yeah, I get. I guess it's just it was just weird. I'm like, what? Why? What? <laughs> Why I felt the same it? way. I was like, am I this? I'm supposed to be this hyped about this sign? <laughs> <Most. laughs> and I'm man like. I'm to the point now with the like offensive line situation where I have now turned where I'm seeing Viking videos and I'm like, but it's not an offensive lineman. Yeah, I want to comment don't... on Twitter, random Twitter threads, like put on offensive <laughs> line when it doesn't apply. <laughs> like I've turned, I've, the off season has taken me at him. Um, I think I've realized this at least though, but the offensive linemen that were available in free agency this year, probably not worth the Vikings overspending on because a lot of teams are doing that this yes, year. Like, yes. Let's talk about how much money Nick Easton just got from the New Orleans Saints, and he didn't even play last year. He has a neck injury or back yeah, he's injury coming, or he's, something. Yeah, he's like, coming off a neck, neck, neck surgery. And that was the amount of money he got. It's obscene. Yeah, tw- it's four crazy. for 24 million. I mean, he's not going to probably not see all that, but still, still to get, that, get a four-year deal – when you've started 15, like 17 games in your entire career, you haven't played in a year. You were okay when you were with the Vikings. Like, and it's he's like going to play center. To... He's going to play center too for the Saints. It's like going to like you go to the guitar store with like so when you, $100 yeah. so and when you're you... like, I'm going to get a guitar. <laughs> and then you get in there and you're like, oh my God, I'm not even close yeah, to getting no, a guitar. You, right. That's not enough. That's for good for like a strap. But um... That's what I would say. Yeah, you can get <laughs> one really nice strap and that would be all. They just... They don't have a lot of money to overspend, so you know if they can if they can get other positions filled with what they have and not overspend in other areas like offensive line, then I think that's what they should do, and I think that's what they are doing. You know, re-signing Amir Abdullah. You know, they are looking into some free agent offensive linemen, reportedly, but none of them are. You know, going to blow anyone away, and there's a reason why they're free agents. That's what I was just going to say. Why they're free agents and why they're available now, and why people aren't overpaying for you know, these guys. You know, the best option for them may be just to focus on the draft. I know, think it's literally. I think it's their only option at this point. Uh, well, you mentioned it. Easton gone, Compton gone. Yeah. Really, the only like practical option at this point with a two million dollar cap space remaining is to i saw it today was five million so i i don't know (laughs) somebody said it was nine million i'm like nine million that seems like a number that we could like do something oh yeah like two million five million is like come on like there's nine i saw five i've seen two i'm like Dude, I don't, does anyone know? I don't know if anybody knows. And I've been doing the met- same thing where I go from site to site to site. And yeah. it's like, over the cap, I just have settled on them because that seems to be oh, the one yeah. that other people use. Yeah. So I will go that, with that. They say two. That, I don't know. Yeah. 
and it messes me up too because I'm trying to like when I'm trying to like prove people wrong with something like oh this will, it'll count so much against his cap if they it. trade him or whatever. Uh-huh. And, and it's like, like I can't I don't know. No, actually, actually, it's not. <laughs> yeah, it's like okay, I'll believe you yeah. if it's a good enough explanation. So yes, we're losing. I shouldn't say losing, but all kinds of players are yeah. not signing with the Vikings. Players they, that are but, meh, but yeah, that's where we're so, at with the salary cap. So Latavius Murray, Gonzo, Sheldon Richardson. That one we kind of knew. Yeah, he was going to get the money. Yeah, that was that was the whole point of him being with the Vikings for one year. And we're going to talk about Cleveland in a little bit. He Ooh, went yeah. to Cleveland. That's crazy. Soup. Soup. Oh, I'm so Creep for excited. Soup. I'm so excited for them though, because it like oh poor Cleveland. Oh, it's going to just burst into gonna flames. Be so great. Yes, but at least for now they are like enjoying themselves, and that's a really yeah. exciting time. Off that's season really camps. Cool. So yeah, Latavius Murray, Gonzo. Did he go to New Orleans? Yeah. Okay. Also, Teddy Bridgewater to Stayed New Orleans. Them. Yeah, he didn't. He didn't want to go to Miami, can't. or Miami didn't want him. I can't blame him if it was his decision. Also, can't really. Well, yeah, I know I can totally blame Miami because who did they go with? Fitzpatrick was who they signed today. Yeah. So pff, have fun with that, guys. That and also, what a gig! What a life for Ryan Fitzpatrick. Ah, <laughs> like, uh, it's been the league since two thousand five. Just. Slang. Never, never played in the playoffs. You're kidding! Nope. Oh, poor guy. That's he's been sad. with the Bills, the Texans, the what was he with? always no. The when, he's, up when he was with the Texans, they, I don't think they made the playoffs. Yeah. The Jets, now the Dolphins. He's been in the every team on the AFC East, and Tom Brady's been with the same <laughs> team just the whole time. <laughs> But yeah, so that's where Miami went. I don't know. Can't blame him for that. Teddy's got a lot to prove. Here's my like biggest fear. Maybe is Teddy Bridgewater going to New Orleans? Drew Brees retiring, and Teddy Bridgewater being just a beast and eating up the NFC for years. And the that would be the only time I'd ever root for the Saints. Yeah, and I still don't just, even know if I'd be able to root for him. It's even really like hard to root against Teddy. It is. He has to like murder someone for me not to. <laughs> and even then, I'd be like, "But what were the circumstances? Yeah, Was yeah. Self defense? Are you sure? Because he's a. Let's really get all guy. the evidence. Let's get all the evidence. <laughs> let's, yeah, let's not rush unlike, to any judgments. Unlike here. you know Tyree Kill, when we're all like, <laughs> fire him. But, yeah. Fire him. <laughs> um, what else, Teddy? We well, talked about well, now. Well, now the Vikings guard situation. They have uh, Danny. Isadora and that's it. And all, that end of list. Yeah, man. It's I mean Pat Elfline can play guard. But then I who's your center? Avian Avian Collins can play guard, maybe. Oh, yeah, Cornelius Edison looked yeah. okay. Uh, okay. That was also at the same time where guys like Tom Compton looked pretty good. And guys like uh what, Remmers training? and Reef looked yeah, in training camp. Yeah. <laughs> <When they can't laughs> where everybody looked pretty good. Yeah. yeah. So I don't know if Cornelius Edison is very good, but he is one guy from the preseason last year yeah. that I actually remember and being like, that dude I wouldn't have a problem with. And we also have to think about, you know, their new offensive coaches. Maybe they don't – maybe they didn't think, you know. I think the Vikings wanted Easton back. They just couldn't – he became out of their price range with the Saints. They weren't going to give him that much money. God, dude, think um, about that. Nick <laughs> Easton just, like, got – like, was too expensive for oh, the Oh, it was Vikings weird because, like, like, Ian Rappaport was, like, talking about it on – NFL Network and stuff. I'm like, is Nick Easton? Like, yeah, like are we talking about the same guy? <laughs> is this the same <laughs> offensive lineman who was unable to play last year? Yeah, yeah, man. It's it's terrifying. Here, I guess, the big question for the offensive line and with the Vikings is... There's only one? It, well, there's many different ones. You could, it, Literally, position by position, you could go down one by one and, and go through questions. But big questions... Do you think – well, first of all, I think this group in the old system, not good enough. <laughs> we don't well, need they, – They weren't good with the players that they lost. That's what I'm saying. And those guys are all gone now, and now it's this yeah. group. Mm, that worries me a lot. But this isn't that system, that offense. Yeah. This is a new offense. The Filippo system. It is difficult for me to believe – that those players are going to be that much better because they don't the offensive line and we've been my god adam we've been saying it for years the offensive line doesn't have to be great it just has to be serviceable it just has to be okay pat or pat Elfline, pat Shermer figured out a way to do that i think kubiak can figure out a way to do oh, that yeah but he with this group so here to me the biggest question is do you think with this group 
and you add in a couple of draft picks, couple three yeah. at max, do you think that is good enough? A seven. <laughs> do you think that seven draft picks of offensive linemen only yeah. and the group they have right now, do you think that's a good enough group to get them where um, they want to go? I think it can be because I think what a lot of people don't realize is that offensive line, like it's very rare to have an offensive lineman that is – good no matter what like no matter what scheme like an Orlando Pace or Jonathan Ogden like those kind of guys like they're going to be good no matter what system they play in because they're just good but you know you get average guys like Riley Reef and you know Pat Elfline um it really doesn't yeah those guys the scheme makes a lot of the difference and I think you know with Kubiak getting in there and Dennison switching to their scheme. Oh, and Kevin Stefanski. Let's not forget about him. He is the offensive coordinator. coordinator. (laughs) (laughs) Um, But I think scheme makes a lot more of a difference with offensive line play than, than the actual talent level of offensive linemen. Just, I mean, you nailed it. That that is 100% it. The system means more than the skill of the group that you have. So I I do think now I'm definitely sliding closer towards the, I don't think this group is good enough, no matter what system we're looking at camp, but I'm not there yet. And I, I do think that they could, even with the guys that they have and the guys that they can draft, even if it's two dudes in the early rounds, God, I hope in the early rounds, first three, I think that you could get a serviceable group out of this. Because, again, oh, yeah. they don't have to be amazing. Well, they just have Brian to not O'Neal. be a catastrophe. Yes, yeah, look a great example. O'Neal. Great example. Pat Elfline. Yes. And those guys are going to be better in this system than they were because they are oh, yeah. smaller oh, I think and Brian, more mobile. I think Brian O'Neill is going to be very good. He's going to be a stud. I'm so excited. System. He's very athletic. Mm-hmm. Um, mm-hmm. But I, I suggested, like, before free agency even started, well, it might have been in the middle of free agency that – I thought the Vikings would release uh, Riley Reef because it would free up a lot of cap space, and uh, they can't do that anymore because Easton is gone. So they can't. I don't think they can afford to do that. No. But they, what they can't afford to do is look into trading a cornerback by the, whose name rhymes with Shmay Schwain. <laughs> that was a really good rhyme. You should be. In, <laughs> you should be an MC. I think. Oh uh, yeah. Yeah. We put out an album. I do have Garage Band. So. <laughs> album A, dude. We could do that. Actually, hang on quick. Can put me on auto Just one second. Ah, dude. Get in there. You want freestyle now? Can you hear the music? Uh, no, I'm good. Okay. I can't hear it. Cool. All right. Well, uh, <laughs> like, go good back try. and listen to it after we're done with this. And I mean, it's fire. So you can just loop that and, uh, you yeah. know, practice with it. And then next week we'll do freestyles. Um, have, yeah. I, Trey Wayne's on the trading yeah. block. Uh at this point, I am. I kind of wrote a little bit about it in like a panic report article, but yep. they have to have another move. There's no way they can. Yeah, they have to. They have to. They, <laughs> they, can't their, they can't afford their rookie class. I was going to ask you this, and I've been searching, and I cannot find it. What is the total amount of this draft class going to be? Obviously, Usually it's it de- around, depends on how many picks you have. But it's around like like four to six million. That's what I was going to say. It has to be over oh, $3 million, and they're yeah. sitting on two point three or ten, depending on who you ask. Yeah, and it, then they have to worry about, like, in training camp, if someone gets hurt, and they have to have money to sign somebody in case that happens. And then, mm. you know, are they going to extend Thielen? So either they need to trade Trey Waynes, or they need to extend him and lower his cap hit for next year. Or cut and then, Kyle and, Rudolph. Uh, that's not going to happen. I don't think so um, either, but that would they be might they might cop. do that for they might do that for him though they might extend Kyle Rudolph and lower his cap hit for next year, and then maybe try and restructure Reef too. So I'm sure there's some some inner some workings going on behind the scenes right now. I know I know I saw something today where they're trying to you know figure out how to extend Thielen, but obviously they need the money to do that. Do you think um, people would go? Not, are people going to be frustrated that they're extending Thielen and not dealing with the offensive line? Like we're this I mean, is power. They, they will because right because yeah. because anything not having to do with the offensive line is, is it's like total. Yeah. yeah, is the absolute worst <laughs> yes. for an, the casual fan or whatever. But they have to they have to extend Thielen. You know he he's worth a lot more. Um, you know you want your guys to be happy. I'm sure he's very happy right now with the money that he makes. But 
he's going to want more next year. His price tag's only probably going to get higher. That, I think, is maybe the best point, is that if you don't do it now, he's just going to get better, and you're going to have to pay him more. It's going to be like, the Patriots want to trade for him. It's like, gosh. (laughs) Never trade with the Patriots, ever. Uh, Yeah, I mean, at this point, would you be disappointed that they are trading a corner, or do you think they're so hosed from a cap standpoint? They can draft one in the first round. Yeah, good call. Yeah, there you go. 18, no problem. Just draft another <laughs> corner. Oh, my God. That'll be fine. I don't see any issue with no that. One, no one would freak out about <laughs> no, that. It wouldn't no. even. No. <laughs> <laughs> Not a big deal at all. Um, uh, who I else? would love that just to see everything just burst into flames. Just everyone freaking out. You know. Just because there's only one. The first, the first round is only like one. It's only one day, so you have a whole day to oh, like yeah, freak out. Oh, yeah, 24 hours. <laughs> yes, you're totally right. I forget about that every year. Oh, man. the I think they have to. I also, though, think from a defensive back standpoint, I mean, we Marcus Sherrills was playing last year because yeah. they didn't have depth. And you got guys coming off of ACLs. You got guys who, I mean, it yeah. feels like there's a lot of depth there, but I don't know if getting rid of one of those guys so you can bring in a well i mean if they trade Trey Waynes, they're gonna they're they're gonna get another draft pick in exchange yeah and probably point. a decent one a third or a fourth i was gonna say what do you think that would be a third fourth fifth they would they would be lucky very lucky to get a, a second there's a couple teams that have multiple second round picks i think the colts are who are actually interested in Look, trading for a corner. So, dude, if they could get a second uh, round pick, I am. For, oh yeah, you take that. I'm for that. Um, even if they get a third round pick, I think it's a good a good deal because mm. for those picks, you know, rounds one through three, they're usually pretty good. End up being pretty good players in the NFL, mm. with, you know, solid contributors. Um, and then you know, the Vikings are pretty good at snagging guys off. You know, the market that haven't been drafted too. So, um, but what are they going to pay them with? Yeah, <laughs> and then I'm not. I wouldn't be as worried about corners because of who their head coach is, and they've had the same DB coach the entire time. That for makes me, him. For me, that's the only argument to trading <clears throat> a corner in the depth issue is that's yeah. that's what our head coach is good at. If he's not yeah. able to turn some guys who aren't supposed to be good into serviceable, decent players, then he made he made Adam Jones into like a Pro Bowl corner. It's true. Oh, dude, what about perfect? Bring him in, right? Uh, no. <laughs> what did I see? Florio suggested that today. Yeah. Get out of here. Love it. Get out of here. Love it. I'm sure it was his best year. Where's he, with Where's he even going to play? That's everybody in that whole. System. If they, if the Vikings want someone to like go into the other team's locker room and like beat everyone up, then yeah, something. But otherwise, they don't really have a spot for him on their roster. Yeah, they. Yeah, you know that's probably a better idea. Actually, is just kind of paint yeah. under the table. And All right, we need you. Yeah, up. yeah, like just put him in like a uh, put some pantyhose on his head or something, so no one knows who he is. <laughs> <laughs> they, they're football players. They wear the helmets with the masks, so nobody yeah. can tell. Anyways, no unless knows. you're like a rock star, nobody knows. Yeah. Uh, what else should we discuss? Everson Griffin restructure. He will be back. That's exciting. But this feels kind of like the beginning of the end. It wasn't a lot. Griffin, doesn't it? No, it wasn't, it wasn't a lot. lot. Like three, it was like three or four million they freed up. Mm. I thought they would free up a little bit more. I don't know why I had paying him one million dollars <laughs> was like in my head, but when it wasn't a million dollars, I don't know. I don't know where it came from. But when it wasn't a million dollars and it was that much more than a million dollars, I was like, I don't even know what? if that's the league minimum at at his age. Bet, I'm sure you're right. I'm sure you're right, and is. that's not even an option. But for whatever reason, that was the number in my brain. I was like, 1.7 mil, no problem, Ev. Thanks for taking the discount. We're going to go to an <laughs> offensive lineman. Yeah. Not so much. No. Not Especially n- yeah, not when the team is built around defense. Mm-mm. Mm-mm. Um, yeah, who else? Speaking of offensive linemen, uh, Matt Khalil. Ho, ho, ho. Whoops. Oh, my God. He's fallen from uh, grace, huh? So shockingly, he is. Well, he's. I guess it is kind of shocking that he was released because of the dead cap money. But um, Blake Bortles to the Rams, by the way. No. <laughs> yeah. Blake Bortles. I mean, if we if if anybody can make Blake Bortles successful, if Sean McVay can't do it, 
I mean, that's a good gig. Best. That's a good gig to be a backup. Though. It's the best gig to be a backup. Yeah. And also, Bortles has been like just loving life this whole oh, time. Yeah. I mean, a lot of a lot of smack talk thrown around, but he's a good. He's been a trooper, quadrillionaire, and you're in Jacksonville. Oh yeah, and like yeah. nothing ever happened. Now he, AFC yeah, now he's going to L.A. Yeah, and now you get to live in L.A. and just like hang out and watch this incredible offense. Try and learn a little bit. <laughs> what a gig. But yeah, yeah, Matt Khalil, uh, no longer playing football, currently employed. Yeah. Large cap hit happening because of that as a dead money move, meaning... Is it? No, I think they I think they did a June 1. I think they might have done a June 1 designation. Okay. So it might, it might the cap... But either way, he's he's released. He's released. He's and gone. He they has, just he signed him last offseason, right? 2017, yeah. 2017, yeah. So, um... So two off two off seasons two off seasons ago so rough it was like, brutal sorry yeah, it was like Cleo. four year fifty five, like four or five years for fifty five million mm-hmm. yeah he he was never gonna get all that if you'll remember he was not pushed hard enough here yeah or so a, he says yeah that now yeah. he now that he had some real coaches well he's him. well he's he, when he joined the Panthers you know he was in the best shape of his life. Mm-hmm. So. And yeah, then no, you're you definitely just, in the uh, best shape of your life when you own that many pizza joints. Come on now. <laughs> not even so last year with a uh, with a knee injury. So. Super fun, Matt Khalil. Bye. Pro Bowl. Ooh. It's Pro Bowl though. Yeah, that's true. That one year. That was a great year. Um <laughs> what do you make of Andrew Sandejo going to the Eagles? Um first I, off, he would. I just that's what I was just gonna say. Just flipped. Like you're on you just made the list, Andrew Sandejo. Yeah. Yeah, he's gonna be uh, yeah, now. He's gonna be like, I think the Eagles are playing the Vikings next year. What that Thanksgiving, the rumored Thanksgiving game. So, you know, Diggs and Thielen, uh, please keep your head on a swivel, and because he's not gonna care at all if he gets flagged, and I don't think the Eagles are gonna care at all if he gets flagged for knocking one of those guys out. He will be public enemy number one if he destroys one of our wonderful wide receivers. Oh yeah, he's gonna be amped up to play. Yes, you know he that. will. He will want because to. That's how because he plays the Vi- football. Because the Vikings said, mm, no thanks. You're not good enough. That was what they said to him. Oh, I don't like it. I don't like <laughs> it at all. Uh, but, not a big fan. Uh, yeah. But I can't, I mean, who, A, how much playing time but, is he going to get there? Probably not yeah. a ton. And B. And there's a reason why he was like, oh. That's exactly right. And, if and you're not, if that, you, yeah, if you can't succeed in the Vikings defense, which is, you know, geared around defensive backs Mm -hmm. and you're probably not that good you're probably going to have a tough time uh excelling in any other spot philly's good maybe he'll play well i don't know like good luck or whatever but like come on he's gonna have at least one good game and that's gonna be against the vikings just like whenever percy harvin would play the vikings he would just yeah that would be like his only game that he plays every year i was just gonna say that he (laughs) missed the majority of the rest of the season but oh the vikings are coming down i'm gonna be healthy make sure he'd stick it but he played. He played against them. What? He was the Seahawks, the Jets. Did he play against them when he was with the Bills? I think so. I remember a Bills like, game with him. And every time that he played, his team played the Vikings. He made sure he was happy. Mm, he was so good for a stretch. Oh he yeah, was so fun to watch. Really unfortunate. Um, I guess you know. Let's open it up. Let's open it up. To, uh, let's do some bigger questions here, Adam. All right. What do you think the Vikings need? Obviously, offensive linemen. <clears throat> But what do you think, big picture, their like next move is? Do you think it's a trade? Do you think it's just draft these guys and see what you got? Do you think it's like, what do you think the next play is here? Well, they have to they have to clear up some cap space, so they have to figure that out. They have to be able to pay their draft picks. <laughs> yeah, whether, whether it's a, <laughs> I hope. A, a trade, I, I think they should try and trade Trey Waynes. I think, you know, what they can get for him right now is – probably what they'll be able to get like the most for him at any point in time um so they should try and do that that'll clear up like nine million um they should try and restructure kyle rudolph um try and restructure riley reef if he doesn't want to restructure then you know releasing him would not be the worst thing in the world it really it really would not can you play football games when you only have three offensive linemen <laughs> <clears throat> but I, is that but, something you but can releasing see? him frees up cap space to hey, sign some. Great point. 
Doesn't he uh, though? Wouldn't he have a dead cap situation? If a little they bit, were to... but it's okay. but it's spread out over two years, I believe. So I think like if they gave him a June one designation, it would be like two million this year and four million next year, something like something like that. Okay. It would feel like nine. It would feel like nine million. So. And that they would just, be enough to sign your draft picks, which yeah. is basically uh, all we're looking for. At this they point. don't have a kicker right now, so fair point. They need to figure that out. Hopefully, it will not be them drafting. They're the kicker. definitely if drafting. They, a if kicker. they like, if they like a rookie kicker, do not, do not, do not, do not, do not draft him. Sign an undrafted free agent. The luck of the, either of those players succeeding will probably be around the same. So please do not waste a draft pick on a kicker. Just take an offensive lineman if you're going to do that. <laughs> <See>? <laughs> just make everybody when else, happier and when just else, do Yeah, that. when all else fails, just, you know, backup quarterback. Do you uh, – here, real question. Do you think that – or let me start over. Do you still have confidence in the people making these decisions that what they're doing can work out for the – in the, like the best interest of the team, or are you starting to think that maybe they're not sure what they're doing and that this whole thing is a disaster? Cause I still feel like people, I guess Rick <clears throat> Spielman or Zimmer <throat> or whoever, but do you, I feel like even though people who are complaining about this stuff, it doesn't, I don't get the sense from angry people on Twitter that they think Spielman's incompetent. They just think they're being neglectful. Does that make yeah. sense? That's a strange way to put it, but. I also think some of the people that are saying that haven't been maybe following the Vikings as long um, and aren't familiar with Spielman's lack of success when it comes to fixing the offensive line. Or especially fixing it like through the draft. Through the draft, I mean, signed Andre Smith, Alex Boone, Riley Reef, Mike Remmers. Like, none of these guys have really Panned worked out. out. I mean, so. I mean, you can make an argument for Reef and Remmers because they played so much, but when yeah. that's how you're, but when that's how you're basing yeah. the argument is, well, they got a lot of starts in. Then like Tom Compton's on the list, and that you're in rough territory. But do you personally think that they are like competent right now? Oh. Like they have a plan, oh, or do. do you think they're kind of throwing this whole thing like? Away? No, I do. I I just know <clears throat> they they took a risk on you know signing Kirk Cousins to a big contract, and they knew they're going to have you know not a lot of cap space. And I don't think this is a situation that they've been in since Spielman became the GM. I That's think they've always had like at least you know a good amount of cap space to to work with. Yeah. But you know, Kirk takes up a bunch of space. It's there's no you know doubts about that or ifs and buts or whatever. So it's a new situation for Spielman and Brzezinski. So they're just they're trying to figure out what they can do with what they have, and I think it's just people have to have patience because season is very far very far away. For sure, um, I don't think they're going to miss out on any free agents because or none there aren't... that would make you. Yeah, because all all like the ones that maybe might have had an impact are probably signed already. Mm-hmm. I would agree um, with that completely, and you could even yeah. make an argument that there was only like three impact guys available ever. Period during this yeah. like free agent free agent thing. I agree with you. I think they're not I don't think they're incompetent. No. But I'm starting to wonder if it's I It's just tr- weird how it is weird how Spielman's just sucked at trying to fix offensive line the whole time. It's been it's been tough, and and you could make an argument that part of it was neglect, or that they thought they were going to be able to fix it with free agents and pay a little bit extra to yeah. to make that happen. But, but yeah, it, if you keep some yeah. perspective, if Kirk, if signing yeah. Kirk Cousins leads you to a cap crunch that forces you to drop out of the bidding for Nick Easton because he was too yeah. expensive, then that's a fair – like, to me, that still yeah. is like you got to take it 100 times out of yeah. 100. Oh, yeah. When you still have this much talent on the roster, when you still have extended bar. Like, remember yeah. when this signing first went down? Oh, I won't be able cousins, to sign anyone. That was it was you'd have to – well, which one do you want to lose? Bar or, you know, and all of those oh, guys – Yes, all of them have stayed, and the guys that we did wind up losing were dudes like Easton and Compton, and I th- yeah. feel like that is a fair trade, and I'm okay with that. And I am, at this point, going to give them, because of the new scheme, the benefit of the doubt 
on bringing in new guys or drafting guys. Cause maybe it's if not that I'm trying to say Tony Sperano wasn't good at it or that Zimmer's not good at it or Spielman's not good at it. But if Kubiak and his dudes are coming in to be like, this is the guy, this is what we look for yeah, in an offensive lineman. Are. Yeah, man. Then they have to be better at it than they yeah. have been. Right. You would assume. So I, would I feel like so. they can still be good enough to get the Vikings where they need to go. It doesn't look yeah, like it have, now and it scares the crap out no, of them. But. I think you have to go back to the scheme thing and look at when the Vikings offensive line has, has been the worst. It was when, you know, North Turner was running the offense and quarterbacks were having to drop back 19 steps yes. before they threw a pass. And then, you know, with DeFilippo's offense, when just everything was pass, pass, pass. So there wasn't any run game to throw people off. Yes, which so. again was the same thing where you're dropping back and guys know you're dropping yeah. back. And that was the they same were, thing with, with Norv's they, offense. Was, they had the was offensive line. Had their, yeah, they had their most success when Schirmer was the offensive coordinator. And that's because he figured out a way to, you know, make their weaknesses not as glaring. Mm-hmm. So I 100%. think Kubiak I think Kubiak and Stefanski will be able to figure that out. I think so too. I, I have confidence. It is um what is it? March? Yeah, it is it is March. It is March. So long way to go. Long way to go. A lot of things can happen, a lot of changes, a lot of moves. We could trade. We could we we restructure. There's all some, kinds some, of different things that can there's happen. There's been a lot of trades. So. Yeah, it's been in an insane insane off season. Uh speaking of that, Odell Beckham Jr. traded to Cleveland. What do you make of that? And of, wow. speaking of Shermer, I feel really bad for him. Dude, he I heard him on the radio not too long ago and he kind of gave the I don't think he was I think he was leading the charge. I think he was like uh this isn't my type of guy. Well then then he's an idiot. <laughs> I can I I mean it's like well, football coaches make it, weird decisions because they want the, guys who believe. And when you have a dude like that who not only did they isn't going to buy trade him, him. Yeah. not only did they trade him, they got like horrible compensation for him. Yeah. Yeah. Um, that was basically it's like the second coming of the Randy Moss trade when they traded him to the Raiders. I felt like I'm just like really like you just traded and they and they owe. I think they're gonna it's like twenty million or, or sixteen million on on their cap. Beckham's going to take up this year, and he's not even on the roster. Unbelievable! Like, and it, they drafted a run, they re- drafted a running back last year when they oh, had and, so many quarterbacks to choose from. And the GM and now goes out today with, and says that Eli is not overpriced and is not. Oh yeah, washed. It's like, oh guy, you're just ruining it. You're doing it the yeah, worst I wrote, way. I wrote, yeah, I wrote something a couple of days ago about how the Giants are the worst franchise in the nfl right now it's just because of basically who the gm is who only probably has that job from his work in carolina which was pretty much inheriting players that they already had on the roster before he got there and then them succeeding under him so it made him look like he actually knew what he was doing but it's clear that he doesn't i don't understand how you can be building a team and so obviously avoid. They just signed him to an extension. That's what I'm saying. And so obviously avoid the important moves that everybody does. You have a franchise player. He's your best player. He's your best offensive player. You lock him up, even if you're in a rebuilding process. Because like I understand the argument that like, well, they're going to be rebuilding, and Beckham isn't going to like that, and he's probably going to throw a stink. And they just rebuilding. Saw... They've had one week, one winning season in the past like five. Well, so. that's well, and they just saw. <laughs> I think, honest to God, I think they saw what happened in Pittsburgh. Pittsburgh. And yes, and I think that they did not want any of that. We'll take what we can get now because oh, if he, about. yeah, because if he throws a stink, Odell Beckham, and we're going to get a third never, round pick which, for it. Which he, he never has been that kind of player. It's true. So the only thing he's complained about is. Stuff that has to do with like on the field, mm-hmm. like you know, as a tough not time getting with in, kicking next, he's, but that he's I mean, re- you can work around. He's a re- that. he's a receiver. Obviously, he's going to want the ball. Yeah, and he knows he's good, so he's going to want the ball in his hands. Yeah. And for the you know, <clears throat> I just think the Giants are so dumb. Like what? What do you? If you're a Giants fan, what do you have to look forward to next year? Literally nothing. The draft, honest to God, the draft. So you can take a, another running back, and what? that's like, over a year away. <laughs> you know they're gonna take they're gonna take someone like DK Metcalf, and he's not gonna be good. Mm-hmm. Not have anybody to throw him the ball. And or they're gonna Eli's pass, just gonna, they're gonna play, play till he's. They're seven. gonna yeah they're gonna pass like <clears throat> Kyler Murray's gonna be available for them and they're gonna pass on him. 
because, you know, it wasn't the guy they wanted. And Eli's, you know, the plan moving forward. Oh, man. It just, like, how can you look at that team and make those decisions? It truly is shocking to me. Like, I, I can, the Odell Beckham thing, I can at least understand why in a frightened, panicked sense you would be like, okay, let's trade him to get what we can get. But, like, the rest of everything that's going on there is just, like, I can't can't jive with it. Don't get it. Don't understand. Uh, what I think else? It's just, it just you signed him to an extension last year. You committed to him. Like, mm-hmm. Literally said in the press conference, if you we don't, did not you ruin... sign him to trade him. Yeah, like you what ru- he said. Two weeks, like, two or three weeks ago. Like, you mm. ruin part of the future, like, your ability to build for the future by trading someone who just signed an extension because mm-hmm. of the amount of money you still owe him. So and you're yeah. basically and poor Pat Shermer he like goes out there to like get you know oh he's got they got Odell totally they, gets they, settled they got in two we got pick. some weapons this is going to be great and he winds up with a running back and then all of his best players are gone I find and he's going to get destroyed yeah. for two years and then get fired I find it very hard to believe that uh, Shermer didn't want Odell on this team because. Uh, he's very, 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 very good. I think Gettleman had a lot to do with it. He's a, I think he worked under Coughlin a lot. So I completely agree with that. Um, those but two are the interview I heard with him, Adam. They were asking him about Odell Beckham. Yeah. He was like, I mean, he's okay. I was like, that okay. that's not. I was like, that's not an endorsement. Hey, that's not what I heard. I'd be happy for Baker Mayfield. Yeah, dude, super happy for him, and also super happy. For the Cleveland Browns fan who was like crying uh, when he got the news, because that makes me feel so happy. Because yeah, they won no games two years ago. That, exactly, and they just got Odell Beckham. They had like Jr. a they like, had like a parade after they won their first game. Dude, Last... congratulations to that guy. They had congratulations all, oh, yeah, they to had all, all Browns fans. They had all those beer fridges. Yeah, and they got to open them, <laughs> but not right away. They had to it took a little while. Yeah, dude, Cleveland Browns. Congratulations on being like relevant and excited, and they like, have, like, that's the, a great feeling, man. Congrats, fifth, it's awesome. They have like the fifth highest Super Bowl odds now. Yeah, the Browns. It still is like hard for me to like put together like contenders. <laughs> sure, no, I don't mean they, from Cleveland. They should. They Baker Mayfield's good. Um, they just got Richardson. They just got Odell Beckham. Mm-hmm. They got, got some good players on their defense. You know, it's the teams in their division are not. On the way up. It's hard to suck for that long in the NFL with the amount of draft uh, picks that you get. Like, I mean, those high picks, great players, You, it's hard to be that bad. I mean, they did a pretty good job at it. For they a were while. awesome <laughs> at being that bad. They were incredible at being that Remember, bad. like, the Bengals in, like, the 90s, how they sucked like, mm-hmm. every year? You know, I was thinking, what other team has sucked? Oh, I guess the Lions for a stretch were, like, in the, like, no-win territory. Bills? Bills, great point. Who else? That's basically no one wants it. to. No one wants to play for the Bills, so it doesn't matter anyways. People get pissed. Poor, poor folks over there. Um, oh, can you? Oh, well, what? going off task or whatever, but <clears throat> related to the Bills, can you name their highest paid player on their roster? Oh, because it's a place where players want to be and free agents come to sign. I, I don't know why no one, everyone gives it a bad rap. Oh man, I have no idea who their highest paid Star is. Star Lutalele. Who? Right. He's a defensive tackle. Wow. I think he makes like fifty million. And he's their highest paid player. Yep. They got they got some issues in Buffalo right now. No, everyone wants to go there. It's important that we don't say bad things about Buffalo on the podcast because what? we will hear about them later I on. Won't, I won't I won't sh- Take the this portion of the podcast and post it. <laughs> God no, you don't do, do that. Anything like that? No, no, no. Um, how long have we? Oh, fifty minutes. Closing remarks. Ten minutes. Closing remarks. Yeah. Do you got anything? Um, I, we kind of already talked about it, but just going back to, you know, n- not freaking out about the the Vikings not overspending on offensive linemen or or seeing all these offensive linemen leave that were okay. Um, because they can, they have guys on their roster. They do have guys on their roster. Mm-hmm. They're pr- a lot of unknowns. They're young guys. Not a whole lot has been seen of them playing on the actual football field. Um, so those guys could be put in there. They get guys from the draft, you know, 
it's really about the offense, like the play calling. It really is. Yep. I don't I don't know how many times people have, like people are never going to understand this. There's there's people out there that are just going to be like, "Ah, oh, it doesn't matter. You have to sign like 19 offensive linemen yeah. before I'm happy." Well, but the, like just No, you're totally right. And that that was going to be you nailed it and this was going to be my closing remark today was because of the scheme change you can't, and I can't, and they can't, and we can't. Nobody can tell me that they're going to be awful. You don't know. Yeah. They're getting yeah. a new system. You don't know if these guys are going to be good in this system. You don't know if they're going to be bad. I mean, it's possible they could be way worse than we imagine. Oh, but yeah. you cannot with any certainty tell me that you know this offensive line is going to be terrible as it stands right now. Because you don't know that. We don't know that. So that was going to be mine was chill out. We don't know yet, and that's okay. And there's a lot of yeah. time, training camp cuts, guys coming. I mean, there's time to make moves. It's going to be make, okay. They made a trade before the like during training camp last year. Mm-hmm. So mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. You can do that I again. Mean, the, you can do all kinds of different things. And and lest we forget, Spielman has been known to make some trades on draft day. A few. So it's possible that in a couple of weeks couple of months we're not even really that concerned about the offensive line yeah. that's inaccurate we're definitely <laughs> be concerned i'm sorry that was too Ooh. much i went too far there i went too far jim, i went too jim far. gaffigan over here yeah, my um yeah jim gaffigan <laughs> oh maybe maybe i have one other thing that like like spending people keep criticizing how this team is built around defense mm-hmm. and oh the, the league is heading towards you know everything's on offense and it's like um, the score in the Super Bowl was thirteen to three. So I think defense still, still, still gets the job done. You know, there are certain teams offense is doing great for them, Chiefs, Rams. Mm-hmm. But when it comes down to it, you give a defensive coach like a little extra time to prepare. Usually, he's going to come out on top. Mm-hmm. Well, that's. Uh, I mean, I was just going to with Chiefs. Rams, all these high-powered offenses, what happened in the games that they lost? They didn't score as much because a good defense yep. stopped them, and they lost. And, and, and well, if what? that's the way you want to build your team, that's a totally totally practical way to do it. It does frustrate me when people, wow, that's old. Defense first and running the ball, that doesn't make any sense because look at how good they are at throwing the ball. And it's like you can have both. Well, both look at the Ravens. They ran the ball like – 60% of the time, 60 almost 70% of the time last year and they made the playoffs for the rookie quarterback. Yeah. Yeah. So you can do it all kinds of different ways. And I hate and I I feel like NFL pa- fans in particular are definitely slaves of the of the What's moment. And stuff? Yes, there's so much recency bias involved with You go back and look at like zone read stuff and and Wildcat, Dude, Wildcat and like, is oh, the first one that comes to mind is what is the uh, NFL going to do? What are we going to do? Wildcat? And then like a year later, after everyone was able to watch tape for a whole off season, mm-hmm. like there That's you fine. go, let's figure it out. Totally. And this will come. This offensive, I, I guess it's an easy argument for people to make because there are so many rules changing that allow offenses to be yeah. more successful. So there are. I mean, it's easy to. It's easy to think that you can by adding on the offensive end that that's an advantage to you. But I feel like it is kind of, I don't know, no, just let's not the act way like you look at the Vikings, it. Let's not act like the Vikings have a bad offense either. Yeah. They have I mean, the, they're not great. Pro- probably the top wide receiver duo in the NFL. A very good young running back in Talvin Cook. Mm. Kyle Rudolph's pretty good. It's not amazing, but he's pretty good. No, uh, Kirk if- Cousins, pretty good. Mm-hmm. He can get the job done. And if so, you eliminate... They're not the Dolphins. Fumbles, interception, pick sixes, the horrible, catastrophic turnovers oh, that yeah. we saw early in the season. And, I mean, then all of a sudden your offense looks a little bit better. Then all of a sudden your confidence, it, it's not. They didn't have, a, they didn't have a, an amazing offense last year because of who was calling the plays. Yeah. It wasn't because of the players they had. I think they have more than enough talent to be successful. Oh, yeah. Offense. That's a great. That's a great place to end it. They have more okay. than enough talent to be right. successful on offense. All right. God dang it! Do you have anything else that you would like to add? Any promotional so. items? Do you have any updates of any kind? Uh, happy St. Patrick's Day. Yeah. Um, 
I don't think so. I think we're I think we're good. Nothing's. We'll just you know next week we'll talk about the next great you know Vikings re-signing Aldrich Robinson or something like that. Um, yeah, buddy. <laughs> gonna be sick. Mir Abdullah, Aldrich Robinson. It's just gonna be gonna Super be the bomb. Ball. And then yeah, dude. And then the draft is gonna be eight uh, offensive linemen and get back to me. Be good to go. Be great. All right, bud. See you next week. Let's go, Vikes. Oh, oh. oh yeah. <laughs>